Well, hello out there. It's Mrs. Coli. I hope you're having a great day. Um, today, I thought I would share with you some important information that's related to both science and writing. And with our curriculum, kind of changed a little bit. This has a lot to do with our science curriculum. So I thought that this would be very beneficial and is fourth and fifth graders as we have to start um, writing expository text, both the opinion papers and informational text. This is perfect for you. So what I'll be teaching you today, as you can see, our goal, our objective, is to learn how to write expository text and specifically the informational style. So let's begin. And you're going to see I'm going to have a lot of little critters um, on display to help remind us um, which classification of animals I'll be writing about and I'll be helping you write about. And um, the science concept has to do with animal adaptations, which is so important to us this year. So I'm going to try to integrate the two different lessons and it can get tricky at times, but um, it's a great way to learn two different concepts at one time. So let's not waste any time and let's jump into this or hop into this lesson as this frog implies. So the different types of writing styles. You know, this is very important as you become a fifth grader, but you're also introduced to all of these styles in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, particularly the narrative style in those primary grades. And if you're sitting there saying, what is a narrative um, style of writing? Well, that's your creative writing. That's where you have your fictional text with the story elements um, that make up that, where you have um, a setting, you have character development, you have a problem and a solution. Those are the story elements that make up a fictional story. Examples of this style of writing would be your short stories, your picture books, chapter books and novels would be great examples of the narrative style. Then as you get into, oh, I know in first grade, we did start to write opinion papers. So that's expository text. That's where you would have your opinion paper where you're going to not only state your opinion, opinion but you're also going to use text that you've researched to support your opinion and then also the informative papers, and that's what we'll be discussing today. And both of these styles of writing are called expository text. And the purpose is to either explain or inform. Well, that's not it. There's two more styles. Let's learn about them today. So another style that you've been exposed to, I know in first grade, probably, yeah, some in kindergarten too, but in first grade, I know we wrote some poetry and we did a lot of journal writing. So these are skills that are developed at a young age. You get the foundational skills and then we just add on to those, right? It just spirals back from year to year. Well, this style is called descriptive writing. And what is its purpose? Well, its purpose is to help the reader visualize the details using their five senses. So if you're good at poetry and you're good at a good journal entry, you're gonna be tapping into those five senses that you have to really help your reader visualize what it is you're describing and notice the word describe that you're describing within that text. And last but not least, another style of writing is called the persuasive writing. And the purpose behind this is to argue your opinion. A lot of times marketing uses this style of writing and its purpose is to defend or persuade others to follow or believe your personal opinion, okay? So this isn't sometimes based with facts. This might just be your personal opinion about something. You can see we have a little owl here to remind us that we're going to be learning about three different classifications of animals. One is going to be about amphibians, which frogs are. And one of the other animals we're going to be learning about today would be owls, from the bird class uh, species of classified animals. And we're also going to be learning about mammals. So you have that to look forward to. But right now, my focus is on teaching you about writing and, and how to write expository text, in particular, informational writing. So these are your steps. And I've tried to make this as explicit 
and as detailed as possible to make this journey of writing um, the least invasive, um, the funnest, and the most um, engaging. So first step, choose a good topic. My topic today will be on animal adaptations using those three different classified animals that I mentioned to you earlier. The second step is to read information that will help you describe and answer your introduction in a reasonable, matter-of-fact way. You're going to write down your facts as a summary and an example of a great resource or tool to use would be one of my favorites and one of my students' favorites, which would be Get Epic. GetEpic.com is a valuable tool. And as teachers, I get it for free. And my students have access to this throughout the day for free. And when they go home for the first two hours, I think you would, if your students um, want to use the resource at home past five o'clock, then they would have to pay for it. Otherwise, it's free. So I would strongly suggest if you're a parent listening to this video or a student, definitely access getepic.com, sign in. This is how you would get into that to sign in and you would sign in as, as a student or if you're a parent and you want to enroll your child in it, you can do that. Or if your teacher has access to it, hopefully if you're a teacher, you get your students on board with getepic.com. I use it for math, language arts, science, and social studies. It's one of my favorite tools as an educator, so I wanted to advertise that or persuade you a little bit to want to use that tool also. Okay, so you're going to read the information. You're going to write down facts to support your introduction or your topic. Third, you're going to decide which facts you want to quote and write the words down exactly the way you see them. Okay, so we have to have quoted text. By fourth grade, especially into fifth grade on to college, you have to quote your text. You have to have references, um, good references too, as you get older. GetEpic.com is probably not going to work well, you know, once you're in junior high, but it's a great tool for the elementary grades. Um, next, we need to use a specific type of graphic organizer to help us organize our paper. Fifth, you're going to write your rough draft. Six, don't forget to edit and revise the text. Don't just write it one time. Good writers go back and revise, edit, and then they create it for their teacher as a final copy. So we're going to go through those steps together. Here we go. First, use a good graphic organizer. Here's a sample of one. The next thing is we really have to understand our topic. So animal adaptations, well, in order to write this paper, we better understand what the different types of animal adaptations are. So I went ahead and I shared the definition with you in case you haven't yet learned this um, at school or at home. The definition of animal adaptations, there are three different types. And I'll be um, referencing these three types within my paper. So the first one is behavioral responses. Animals adapt um, by their behavioral um, adaptations, and that's responses made by an organism that helps it to survive or reproduce. There's also the physiological adaptation, which is a body process that helps an organism to survive or reproduce. So that one's a bo the actual body process. Behavioral is just a response to an, an environmental change. And then we have, last but not least, number three is structural. Structural adaptations is a feature of an organism's body they actually change that helps it to survive and reproduce. Okay, so those are the three. Let's go into more detail. Here we go. Well, what would I do? This is a sample of what I did with my classes. We, we completed this project together, this writing project. And you can see how we as a class, we used our graphic organizer to get us organized to break it down to our physiological, behavioral adaptations, and structural. And then I used each of those three different animals that I talked about. Remember, I talked about mammals, and I specifically talked about dolphins and their physiological, behavioral, and structural adaptations that they make in order to survive. And then I also talked about amphibians, specifically about the, the frogs. And then for the the third animal I chose was birds, and I chose owls. 
So you can kind of see the way it would look if you're an organized writer. Next, this is a sample of a rough draft that my class and I organized together, coming up with our introduction, and then we had the body of it. And each of the, it looks like I chose to do paragraphs representing each of the different um, adaptations, the physiological, the behavioral, and structural. I chose a paragraph for each of those. It looks like in my rough draft. And that's what that looked like. And here's the tail end with my conclusion. You can see as I was using Get Epic how I would go to different books. And this all came from one book. There's my author, my, the name of my book. And these were some of the quotes I used from that book and some of the summary notes that I wanted to use um, as I wrote my paper. Now let's take a look at what my paper ended up looking like. So my final copy was this. You can see that I wanted to show you. Now, what I have title and hook and intro and body of text, actually, if I was to type this for my teacher, the answer would be no. Just for purposes of showing you the breakdown of each of those steps, I added those here just to help you. So what is my title? Well, as you can see, the title is Adaptations. Then I included my hook and my intro to my title. And this is how it reads. It's in green. The definition of adaptation is the process or state of adapting, I'm sorry, or state of adjusting or changing to become more suited to an environment. Many animals have survived by physiological, structural, and behavioral adaptations. Okay, so that's my hook. Hooks can also be definitions too, just so you know. I know when we do opinion papers, typically we don't start with a definition. We want something to grab our reader's attention. Well, a definition is a good way if your reader doesn't know what an animal adaptation is. Um, the body of text is in black. And you can see as, as a fifth grader, you're going to have to start to use a lot of examples and a lot of quoted text. So I, I didn't really add as much of that here because I am a fourth grade teacher. So this is a great example of a benchmark paper of expository text in particular about informative writing. So if I was a fifth grader, I would have to include a lot more of examples and I'd have more paragraphs. But again, this is written more for a fourth grade fourth grader. So my body of my text reads as following. There are many physiological adaptations that help mammals, amphibians, and birds survive. Dolphins have blowholes, which let air into the lungs. Quote, on average, dolphins can hold their breath for eight to 10 minutes, end of quote. Amphibians experience brumation. I use parentheses because I wanted to describe this in more detail. Most people don't know what brumation is. That means hibernation and estivation. Most people don't know what estivation is, so you use your parentheses. It means a resting state during the summer in order to survive the harsh seasonal climates. For example, the African, notice this is quoted. For example, the African bullfrog buries itself in the mud and makes a cocoon out of mucus, end of quote. Another example is that the owl's eyes are twice as sensitive as humans, quote. Owls have a lot more rods and not as many cones, so they they lose their color vision. Next paragraph about um, structural ad adaptations. There are many structural adaptations that help animals survive. Dolphins have fins, which help them move forward, backwards, and sideways. Quote, dolphins use their powerful tail to generate enough power to cut through the water at amazing speeds. End of, end of quote. Amphibians have both gills and lungs, which make them a unique species. Quote, amphibians are the only animals with a backbone that can undergo metamorphosis, end of quote, and owls have sharp claws, large eyes to pick up more light rays, and a modification of wings with serrated feathers and hollow bones. Quote, some of the owl's larger bones are hollow, which reduces its overall weight. So that's first page. Second page looks like this. Again, now I'm going to talk about my behavioral adaptations of those three different species that I had classified um, as um, mammals as dolphins, toads, I'm sorry, um, frogs as, as my amphibian and um, 
owls as my birds. There are many behavioral adaptations which help many species to survive. Dolphins hunt in pods or groups. In the ocean, the pod is the basic social unit. It provides for a cooperative way of life and increases the chances for survival. End of quote. For amphibians, they have adapted well in order to survive. However, sadly, quote, one third of amphibians in the United States are threatened by extinction. End of quote. In fact, today there are 5,500 known amphibians that live on planet Earth, and these amphibians have had to learn how to burrow into their environment in order to protect themselves during extreme temperatures. And for owls, they have developed into skilled hunters who are nocturnal, diurnal, or crepuscal. That's an interesting word, isn't it? Which means active during the twilight hours of dawn or dusk. Because of this adaptation, there are more than 200 species of owls, end of quote. Conclusion. In conclusion, many different types of animal species have survived by using physiological, structural, and behavioral adaptations. It's important to remember that adaptations are essential for an organism's existence, but it's even more important to remember that we all need each other to survive. Well, that is how you write a paper. That is how you write a good fourth grade paper and with examples of what to do for fifth grade. I hope this has helped you today. I sure enjoyed sharing this topic with you about how to write expository text, in particular, how to write informative um, style of writing and using animal adaptations is our topic. Well, I hope you have a great day. Keep smiling and don't forget to be a great reader and an excellent writer. Until next time, bye-bye.